start coloring in the shadow. Make it look nice and more circular, of course. Make it look like the shape of the actual object. That's very important. Remember that. All right? And there, we got an apple. Now I've taught you one thing, the apple. But let me teach you something else, the wine bottle. Now, a wine bottle is not gonna be a square to start out with, right? Because it wouldn't be like an apple shape. It's gonna be more long and cylinder-like, right? Got it? So let's just start off with a rectangle. Now, depending on what kind of wine bottle you're drawing, right? You're gonna find out where it splits off and opens up to make it wider, right? And where the tip should be. But of course this depends on what wine bottle you're drawing. And you gotta draw the one that Mark Twain provides you. Remember that, don't just draw your own. So make sure you know around where it splits off and where it turns into a tip, got it? All right, so I'm gonna say mine splits off around this section right here, you see it? All right, this section. So I'm gonna draw the tip over here. Make it split off like right there, see it? All right, see? Now, do this to make the rest of it. All right, that's how it should look like for now. Of course, just like the apple, you're gonna have to take care of the excess stuff, right? Get rid of this, get rid of this part, and the remaining part of this rectangle right here. See, you got that much so far. Now, you're gonna add a little more details, such as the logo of the wine bottle and whatnot. See? Got it? Yeah. And then the tip, of course, over here is where you will have that section of it, where you usually drink out of, of course. Perfect, right? Of course, this is how far you're gonna get now but you're gonna have to do the rest of what you did with the apple to this too. Shading, lighting, and shadowing. Let's just say, light comes here, shadow's gonna be here, got it? That's how far I'm gonna go right now. So like I was saying, shadowing and shading, of course. You're gonna have to do like, wherever the light comes from, let's just say it comes from here, right? You're gonna have to make it lighter here in this section right here, and make it darker on this side, just like you did with the apple. Simple enough, right? So dark, dark, right? Make sure you know the difference between the colors over here though. Since a wine bottle is curved like that and it has a logo here, this is gonna be a different shape than this. So work on the wine bottle first, got it? And then just shade your way across. Same way you did with the apple. Not too hard, pretty simple. until you reach this section, and there, you're done with the bottom. Now do the top, and make it towards that shape, you see it? Right there. And make it lighter, lighter, and like this. And then, fill up this section right here. And now, you work on this thing, the logo, got it? Different shade means it's probably gonna be either lighter or darker than the bottle itself. I'm gonna say mine is darker. So the dark zone of it, which is the area you shade the most, will be a lot larger than the dark zone on the top. Got it? And you work with it, work with it, keep going until you reach the logo side. Then you finish off on this side as well. All right, now you see the light is right there. It's in this section right here. Shines on it, got it. Now logo, you can either draw it or leave it out. I would leave it out personally. You're just wasting time if you draw it anyways. They're not expecting too much from this. All right, something like that. But now you gotta get the shadowing down too. And this might be a little bit harder. So you shadow around this section right here. And depending on the lighting, the shadow could change. It could even look like the shape itself, or just be darker, and it'll go lighter as it turns into the shape of the bottle itself. See that? Yeah, 
something like that. Got it? And that's how you shave and shadow and do still life art.